Dreaming of a better sleep? Tossing and turning is not your destiny. And Ollie is here to help. Ollie invites you to sink into sweet, sweet slumber to improve your mental and physical health and overall wellness. More than just melatonin, Ollie's ingredients help you unwind your mind for a delightfully dreamy drift off. Sleep is on the way at Ollie.com. That's O L L Y.com. It is March 19th, and I'm Caroline Vincent here to bring you today's news on Down in Alabama. I'll be filling in for Ike for a few days this week. First story up, Alabama is considering changing school report cards. Now, why is that? After five years of using letter grades on annual school and district report cards, Alabama's top educators said it's time for a review to make sure these are the best measures to use. Supporters of report cards say parents are familiar with letter grades and it's important to have a way to determine the quality of learning at a school. Opponents say letter grades aren't a fair reflection of what's happening in the school. The law mandating letter grade report cards was passed in 2012, and Eric Mackey, head of the School Superintendents Association at the time, served on the original committee that decided which measures should be included. The first report card with a letter grade wasn't issued until 2018, the year Mackey became state superintendent. Report cards were not issued in 2020 or 2021 due to the pandemic's disruption of state standardized testing. In 2022, Alabama lawmakers split the report card into two, one for federal accountability and one for state accountability. Governor Kay Ivey's Commission on Teaching and Learning issued a report in December recommending the state revisit the A through F report card and to combine the state and federal report card into one report card. Next up, a new addition to a popular memorial in Montgomery. Visitors to the Freedom Monument Sculpture Park wind a serpentine path past art pieces depicting the lives of enslaved people in America in historic exhibits, including two cabins where the enslaved lived, before arriving at a towering monument. The Sculpture Park is the third site created by the Equal Justice Initiative in Montgomery, which is dedicated to taking an unflinching look at the country's history of slavery, racism, and discriminatory policing. The first two sites, the National Memorial for Peace and Justice and the Legacy Museum, both opened in 2018. The Sculpture Park, which opens March 27th, weaves art installations, historic artifacts, and personal narratives to explore the history of slavery in America and honor the millions of people who endured its brutality. The park is opening as some politicians, including the Deep South, try to put parameters on how race and history are taught in classrooms and in workforce training sessions. Later this week, the Alabama Labor Secretary is going to be discussing job options for formerly incarcerated people at a movie screening. Alabama Labor Secretary Fitzgerald Washington will lead a panel discussion at Birmingham's Woodlawn Theater on March 20th following the screening of the documentary Being Free. The film follows three formerly incarcerated individuals on their journey to find careers after prison. The panel event, which will also feature discussion from Society for Human Resource Management CEO Johnny Taylor, Ken Oliver of Checker, Birmingham City Councilor Tanya Tate, and Ronald McKeithen of Alabama Appleseed, is part of statewide efforts to reduce recidivism. Alabama has a low labor force participation rate with 38 workers per 100 open jobs. The state also has a high unemployment rate for formerly incarcerated in individuals over 27 percent, which is 10 times higher than the general population. A 2023 report by the Society for Human Resource Management found that after HR professionals viewed being free, they were more likely to recognize the strengths of formerly incarcerated individuals and the benefits of hiring them. Tailored resources for both people re-entering the population after prison and for hiring professionals are needed, advocates said. Donald Trump got a little confused when claiming he broke Elvis Presley's record crowd at the Alabama State Fair. During one of his signature tangents while addressing a rally in Ohio over the weekend, Donald Trump claimed to have broken Elvis Presley's attendance record at the Alabama State Fair, 
Despite neither man making an appearance at the festival, Trump appeared to have confused his 2021 rally in Coleman, where he stumped for Mo Brooks' campaign for U.S. Senate, with a visit to the fair, which never took place. He told the crowd in Vidalia, Ohio, of Brooks asking him to campaign for him in Alabama, where he made the attendance claim. Trump never made an appearance at the Alabama State Fair, which occurs in Birmingham, and neither did Presley. The King of Rock performed at the Mississippi-Alabama Fair and Dairy Show in September 1956, but the event did not take place in Coleman or Birmingham or Alabama. Trump's Coleman appearance also didn't get a crowd of 68,000. The U.S. Secret Service estimated the crowd at 45,000 people, according to Deputy Chad Whaley of Coleman County Sheriff's Office. The Morgan County Sheriff's Office also posted on its Facebook page it had been given an estimate of 45,000 people in attendance. For these full stories, make sure to head to AL.com and stay tuned. Look for us in your podcast feeds tomorrow for the next edition of Down in Alabama.